change your ATU100 into a QRP version, or you could maybe change your ATU40 QRP version into a 100 watt version. So this is how you do it. First thing, get the, uh, the two screws at the top off, front and back. Once you've done this, the lid will come off. So here's the winding on the one that is, that is 100 watts. Have a good look. Now it's 10, widen, 10 windings each half. So you need to do that. Do that. Looks fiddly, but you have to reduce that to five windings each half. And here is what it looks like when it's finished. There's lots of info online about how to do it. So I'm guessing that if you wanted to make yours a 100 watt version and you've got the um, QRP 40 version, then you would do the opposite. So here's a good look at what they look like close up inside. So this is the 100 watt version. This is the QRP version, it's 40 watts, but it, the, it will kick in tuning sooner. Now some people I know have just um, just changed the settings in the software and they haven't done the winding just so that the tuner kicks in at one watt instead of five watts. So I think that's doable with the Picket Programmer as well. Not sure what the overall usage of it will be, so I might test that on mine. But this is the Picket Programmer. So this video at the moment is just about changing your ATU100 into a QRP device. We plugged in the Picket 3, it's flashing away. The computer instantly had a message on it saying setting it up and it's already installed the driver automatically on Windows 10. Okay, we've connected it to the computer as you just saw and it's come up with this, the Picket 3 is in MP lab mode, use the tools menu to download an operating system compatible with this application. So let's go tools and it go down here, download picket operating system. Let's click that, see what happens. Ah, looks like we have to find it, so okay. You can see here the MCLR one is missing a pin, but that's fine, we've, gotten a, we've made a, um, a connector up for that, one second. So this is the connector we've made up. It's basically two female ends, and we're going to pin one onto the MLCR, MCLR. Right, we've got it on there. And to make sure there's a connection, I'll get my little electrical tester <clears throat> just test. We've got uh, you know a continu cont continuity from the pin to the end of the uh, female connector. So we touch these together, we get a beep. We'll touch the pin there and the end of the other connector. And we'll get in a beep. So we know that it's definitely connected to the MCLR connector. And last look at the configuration here. Let's have a good look. Try and keep still. You need to get the MCLR. there and you need to get it the white arrow here in line with the well we kept we put the black cable on this side just so black on that side as well and then we've just followed the order here so at the top and then just follow down don't mix up the wires what it looks like going into the picket machine another place I've been looking is my friend here IK3 SSG who's made a video doing pretty much what I'm doing now and this link was very valuable here click this and you get the a nice uh, file download here with uh, with items that you need let's quickly show you what's in it uh, it's got the software 
and then you've got these files here and you need these files to set things up so um, there's your little picket XE and when you run the XE uh, you'll get this window here okay and when you just let you know now when you connect your picket 3 you'll go, need to go to tools check communication first yeah and then after that you'll need to go download picket operating system so we're going to go tools and then we're going to go we've done the check communication so we're going to go download picket and we're going to find that where we saved that file so desktop created a file called picket and double click here and look it says here hex so i'm guessing this is like the base hex that they all use so i'm double click that downloading picket 3 bootloader so hopefully that's going to complete let's assume and it should fill all this up with a bit of luck i hear it reboot let it keep rebooting the actual picket machine yeah there we are we can now see the picket 3 connected id equals default blah 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 right so i think we're where we need to be now Okay, we've rebooted and we've fired it up and you've seen the configuration. I'll show it again, the connection and the cables and all that. And we are connected. It says here, device pick 16F, blah, blah, blah. It's talking to the EEPROM. So the numbers we're looking at for, five, for 40 watt and 5 watt, you know, up to 5 watt, is this number here, which looks correct to me, the one that says 40 and this one here that says 05 so the next one i'm going to try and find is how you can make this atu automatically tune without having to press the button so before you make changes it makes sense to export a copy of your of what we'll call what they call the hex so just go file export hex and then in the same i put it in my picket file give it a name yeah i've already got one here called my hex and just save it so that way if you do make any mistakes um, I'm going to click no there. Um, I'm going to cancel that. I don't want to overwrite anything. So I'm going to go file, export. I'm going to go my copy. Sorry about this. Let's delete it back. I'm going to go my copy to my copy to, and then just save it. So we've saved everything. So if we get it wrong, that's fine. So then we're going to make changes. So um one change we i think is popular is some people like to get rid of the fact that you have to even push the button and that's the third one here so all you do is just click it here change zero one sorry zero over zero to zero one okay and then you can save that again if you want file save and i'll just call it no button no button okay so we've saved that copy as well. And now we're already connected to our hex. We're just going to go back to um, programmer and write, write device. And you, I hear the device click there and it writes that in. So now, once that's written in, what I'll do is I'll read it and make sure um, programming is successful, as you can see. And now if I read it, we should have that one here now. But the numbers that actually mattered... Uh, which is the 5 here, yeah, which is I think means it's the 5-watt version. Uh, so I think it makes it kick in at uh, 5 watts. Um, I wouldn't mind lowering that, to be honest. And then that it's a 40-watt 40, 40, um, uh, Q, QRP ATU. So what I'll do, I will read it. I'll go click, read device. We hear it click again. It's going to read it. And nothing should change because we've... Uh, oh, it's still saying um, 01 here, 00 here. So it hasn't saved those settings. I wonder why that is. You think it would? Anyway, we'll have a look in a minute. So we're going to save it again after some changes. So we're just going to go f uh, file, export hex. We've got the no button. So we're going to call it the no button one again and save that. And click yes. So a quick video of it booting up. Just to show it doesn't need the tuning button anymore, so we'll just go 7 megs. Normally we'd have to reset and then push the tuning button, so we'll, we'll just give it a quick key here on 5 watts. 
that. And you can hear it tuning there. So no need for a button. We will reset it. Um, and then we'll do it again. And it tunes. So no need to hold it down to get the, the tune button. So 7-3 uh, all the best.